Well, Americans have been celebrating the Derek Chauvin verdict. And of course, he was found guilty of three charges in the murder of George Floyd. Some conservatives are having difficulty in dealing with this news. They don't like this reality. Tucker Carlson, for example, was so distraught with the verdict that he had a complete meltdown when his guest, a former New York corrections officer, dared to disagree with him. Take a look. The scene. I, I just think that it was excessive yeah, and well, it shouldn't happen. And what I'd like the, to say, the guy more, who did it looks like he's going to spend thing. the rest of his life in prison. So I'm kind of more worried about the rest of the country, which, thanks to police inaction, in case you haven't noticed, is like boarded up. <laughs> so that's more my concern. But, but I appreciate you coming let, on, let, Ed Gavin. Thank let, you. Let, nope, done. Thank you. That is the laugh of a sociopath. Mm -hmm. I have more to say, but John, why don't you jump yeah, in? Yeah, no, I, I think he should have the biggest audience. I think it's a good thing that a country would, out of everyone who does political commentary and media, he should have the biggest audience. That madman there who freaked out Joker style because something that he, as an incredibly rich man, will never be affected by happened and some people were like kind of temporarily relieved that the justice system actually worked for once. And he freaked out about that. Because this guest who he brought on presumably to agree with him about literally everything said that kneeling on someone's neck for eight and a half minutes is excessive, which it objectively is. So I don't, I, I don't know how we're supposed to respond to that. The guy said a reasonable thing and Tucker Carlson absolutely lost his mind and then cut the guy's mic. Yeah, because Tucker Carlson, Tucker Carlson is a coward mm -hmm. when it comes to debating grown men. We experienced it during Politicon when all of a sudden Tucker Carlson in his debate with Jenk Uger was super agreeable and super nice and like, no, I'm actually not a bad guy. I'm not, a, uh, no, I, you know, I might have said things like that on my mm -hmm. show, but in reality, I'm actually, you know, very reasonable person. He uh, he fears debates with grown men. Mm -hmm. The way that he handled that in immediately cutting off the mic, cutting off the interview. And by the way, this is from a free speech advocate, right? Someone who uh, pretends to be concerned about college campuses protesting conservative speakers. Mm -hmm. the, this is, this well, is the free speech. He doesn't like speech that disagrees with him. And when it's a male doing it, He'll, he'll cut that interview off right away, he, he doesn't like that. If it's a young, maybe a female activist, it's, it's a different story. He'll mm -hmm. mock them, he'll make fun of them, he'll, yeah. you know, he'll treat them the way that you would expect someone like Tucker Carlson to treat them. Uh, but we're talking about a former New York corrections officer who isn't even saying anything honestly that impressive. Mm -hmm. He's saying what any rational person would say after watching a video of George Floyd having his neck knelt on for over nine minutes by a cop. He had stopped moving after calling out for his mother who had died years earlier. Yeah. After begging them to stop because he can't breathe. Finally, he stopped moving and Derek Chauvin still didn't move his knee yeah. off his neck. Okay, any reasonable non-sociopathic person watches that video and says, yeah, Derek Chauvin went too far. Tucker Carlson watches it. And thinks, yeah, of course, of course he mm -hmm. should do that. And the, the very thought of someone having to face any consequences for murdering a, a, an unarmed man in broad daylight, like, that's, we can't have mm -hmm. that. We can't have that. It, it was insane. It was also cowardly. And not just cowardly because when the guy pushed back just a tiny little bit, he cut his mic. It was cowardly because he, he so rarely actually says anything on his show. It's just, eh, I don't want to talk about that. So here's a distraction. I'd rather talk about the place being boarded up. Okay, but, but, but you're responding to this particular verdict. You say that the jury was being bullied in some sort of vague way. Okay, what do you think should have actually happened there? He's not actually saying. He responded negatively to it being labeled as excessive. So are you saying he should have been ruled innocent in all of those charges? He's not actually saying that. Presumably he believes it, he certainly wants his audience to come away with the impression that he believes that. But he's not actually going on the record, he almost never goes on the record actually taking a stance on something. Mm -hmm. It's just kicking up some dust, freaking out a little bit, 
Like going red in the face, which looks even more ridiculous with the insane tan that he sprayed onto himself. He doesn't want to actually take a stance, and yet his followers believe that he's strong and logical and intellectual gladiator and all of that. Yeah, an intellectual gladiator doesn't cut off an interview the second the grown man who's disagreeing with him disagrees with him. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what happened in that he is not some courageous person. It's very easy to debunk whatever talking points he has. And I think you're right. He's saying a lot there without actually saying it because clearly he's furious that there were consequences yeah. for Derek Chauvin. And I also want to issue a correction on behalf of Tucker Carlson because in the middle of his hyperventilating, he claimed that Derek Chauvin will spend the rest of his life in prison. That's actually not true. Sure, so yeah. I want to give you the details on that because technically, as CNN reports, Chauvin could face up to 40 years in prison for second degree murder, up to 25 years for third degree murder and up to 10 years for manslaughter. That is unlikely to happen though, because he does not have a criminal record. Mm -hmm. So Chauvin has no prior criminal record. The state's guidelines say that for such a person, the presumptive sentence for both second degree and third degree murder is 12 and a half years. The judge is given discretion to hand down a sentence between 10 years and eight months and 15 years for each. So honestly, it's, it's unlikely that he's gonna spend the rest of his life in prison. But this is what Tucker Carlson does. He didn't even care to, to read the details of, of what the sentencing could be. He didn't care to look into the details of, of what the individual charges entail and why it is that he was found guilty. You think he watched any of the trial? I mean, the police chief, no. the police chief testified against him, okay? The, the witness testimony was so compelling and, and the prosecution did a great job and so, look, only I, a sociopathic person can watch that video of what Chauvin did mm -hmm. and consider it an injustice that for once there's some accountability for the yeah. cop who carries out the brutality. I, I think that's definitely part of it. I think it's also possible that this is something that we talk about often, which is conservatives can't actually empathize. They can't look at another person and wonder about what it's like to have experienced what they've experienced. It has to happen to them. So, you know, um, Jesse Waters didn't get maternity leave until he had his second kid. Uh, Meghan McCain like didn't get maternity leave until that. They can't, it has to happen to them. So uh, you issued a correction, I'll issue a challenge. Um, if kneeling on someone's neck for eight and a half minutes isn't excessive, it's in, if it's in fact totally reasonable, I'll come kneel on your neck, Tucker. Let's do it, let me do the reasonable thing of kneeling on your neck for close to nine minutes. I'll be willing to do that, I'll even pay for the flight. Take me to your studio, I'll kneel on your neck, buddy, and it'll be very, very reasonable. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.